Hi, everybody, and welcome to the AC Mike Show. I'm your host, AC Mike Lopez, and this show will be everything from entertainment to sports, politics, dining, anything and everything that makes our city great. Before we get into today's show, I want to take a moment to tell you how the AC Mike Show and AC Mike Lopez is here today making an everyday impact on Atlantic City. Basically, what we do here on the AC Mike Show and the AC Mike Show on radio, WNOND, is share. We want to take a restorative narrative approach on stories, events, happenings all throughout Atlantic City and Atlantic County. We want to share, and that's what we're solely here for, to have you put the eyes on Atlantic City. So with that being said, let's go into today's guest, because again, here we are, Stockton University president, the one and only Dr. Harvey Kesselman. Also, we're going to have rock and roll, world-renowned rock and roll photographer, Mark Wise Guy Weiss, and from the African American Heritage Museum of South Jersey, Ralph Hunter. So, folks, please stick around and enjoy this inaugural show of the AC Mike Show here on Stockton. Hey folks, AC Mike here. Listen, welcome to the inaugural AC Mike show on the Stockton University channel. We're going to have a great show, a great season. I could not start this show without the one and only president, Dr. Harvey Kesselman, as being my first guest. Dr. Kesselman, welcome to the AC Mike show. I am thrilled, Mike, to be here with you, AC Mike. Uh, you're a gem and a treasure to this region. I could not be more happy, more pleased that you are with Stockton, uh, that you're, you're, you're broadcasting, uh, ultimately utilizing our students as interns. Um, I, I couldn't be more thrilled for, for, for us uh, and for the region. So my, uh, AC Mike, I'm proud to be here. Uh, being an inaugural member of Stockton's first class, I'm thrilled <laughs> to be an inaugural member of your first, first show. So, so again, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. What a great uh, department you have there that I've been working with for the past maybe month and a half, two months. Terrific. Listen, we want to get uh, started here. Uh, me and you have gotten to know each other a little <laughs> bit. Uh, the, the first groundbreaking uh, a few years back uh, on the boardwalk there. And then also with uh, another little show that I do somewhere else where we probably need about two or three hours to, to, to get together. <laughs> but one of the things, uh, Dr. Kesselman, that I've always wanted to, I know about it, but, uh, you, you know, you're always, uh, you know, a, a speaker or a groundbreaking or, you're, you know, the shovel on the ground. What I want folks to get to know is a little bit about Harvey Kesselman. Uh-huh. So tell us a little bit about from the beginning and uh, not so much school yet, uh, a little bit of growing up and, and what were you like and what was it all about? And did you think you were going to come uh, on the AC Mike show one day. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I'm older than you. So I couldn't have come. Um, the, um, you know, I'm, I'm a kid from, you know, Philadelphia. Uh, first generation. I was a first generation college student, but, you know, working class background. Uh, my family, you know, they, you know, my dad, my dad never even finished high school. My mom did. Um, their goal was to get me to college. Okay. No, their goal was to get me past high school right. and college. I was on my own. So I was a legitimate, true first gen Stockton was the perfect university. You know, then it was a college, uh, the perfect college for the kind of student that I was. Um, and, uh, you know, I, who would have think no one, when you, you start a college, number one, I was incredibly fortunate to be at the beginning of Stockton, but certainly when you come in at the beginning of a university, there's, there's no way you're even thinking you would ever become its president. So that, that's like as alien a topic as anything else. So, I mean, I, you know, most of it was, you know, just being in the right place at the right time with the right mentors over the course of a career. Uh, but you know, I had to work hard. Uh, I worked my way through school. You know, I got the student loans, same this all these kinds of things. Because my parents, quite frankly, they didn't know anything about college. They were, like I said, they were. They said, "I got you. Through, we got you through high school." And they were wonderful people. Don't misunderstand me. But that was that was their aspiration. And so, uh, you know, Stockton has been like, you know, my, uh, my one of my trustees said this has been like my Statue of Liberty. I mean, it's where you know I became who I you know who who I've become. Uh, as a result of this. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm just, 
just like anyone else, you know, you, you don't plan these kinds of things. You just work hard, get up earlier, work late, you know, stay up later and, right. and just outwork people. And we've spoke about this. We don't, neither one of us sleep much, but uh, <laughs> one of the first uh, things you told me, I remember we met years ago and uh, you had told me about the start of, uh, of course, that you were in the initial class, but a lot of folks don't realize that it was here in Atlantic city. And listen, it's the AC Mike show. It's all about Atlantic city. That's what the okay. AC is. And, you know, it resonates now of thousands and thousands of students, but you were one of them first classes. Uh, oh, absolutely. Here in AC. And it was at, it was at the, what was then it was virtually condemned, but the, the old Mayflower hotel, on St. James in Tennessee, near where the Irish pub is and down in that part of the, that part of the island. We had no, we, we had no idea we were going to start up there. Uh, there had been a labor dispute with respect to the roofing on some of the buildings at Galloway, so it wasn't ready. And so as a result, what we wound up doing was opening up. We got a letter, I think it was in August, saying, oh, by the way, we're going to open up in Atlantic City. We had no idea. But because people were in this hotel, they were taking their classes there, they had faculty and students and teachers living there. So it became like, if you went to a conference for two or three days, you bond with the people you've been to conference with. Imagine going, you know, 12 weeks, because in those days with the same people doing the same, you bond and that sense of community that we developed at the Mayflower Hotel in Atlantic City, we brought to Galloway and now have brought back to Atlantic City in the new campus. And so, it, you know, if I ever write a book, I'll call it bookends. I started here and ended. And so that, that would be, uh, you know, that would be appropriate. That, that's awesome. So listen, it, it's a great visual when you're coming over that Albany Avenue bridge oh. and you see your university there. Uh, you know, just recently, I want to say a few months ago, we had another uh, groundbreaking. Uh, we're about ready to wrap up, sir. But take a minute and tell us what that was like a, a couple months ago when the governor well, came uh, down. When the and, governor and, was here, the Senate president, the lieutenant governor. Uh, it was a who's who of New Jersey came, John Hanson. That's right. So Chris Paladina, so many others uh, came to see this, and it was the great, you know, it was a great, it was the groundbreaking for phase two, which will be another four hundred and some beds, which will have a thousand residential students within the block uh, of one another. It's 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 right across. It's on you know Providence Avenue and, and Atlantic Avenue right there, and it's it's going to be a gorgeous facility, uh, similar to the other facility. Uh, and look, we we want to do more if we can continue to enroll you know, the strong classes that we've been enrolling over the last several years and continue to grow and continue to get the support from the state and the county and the city and all the other entities that have provided support will continue to be a major, you know, a major anchor in Atlantic City. That's our goal. That's our commitment without neglecting Galloway. I mean, we, we you know, people forget we opened up, you know, a new science, a second science building, a health sciences building. We've done a lot of infrastructure, um, um, construction on the cam on the main campus so we've, we've got a lot going on and we're excited about it we're certainly excited about being you know supportive of the region and the community having people like you on the campus you know providing you know an incredible uh, service public service to the region having so your show yeah, I, and thank you. I really appreciate that. No, and listen, sure. Dr. Kesselman, I want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart. You're 100% AC Mike approved and Stockton <laughs> University. We love what you do. We're going to have you back. Of course, uh, uh, it's going to be fun. Once the spring semester maybe gets over, we'll, we'll, we'll sit down for the full amount of time for the I'd show. I'd like to do that. Thank you. Tell the missus we said hello from me. I sure will. She, she said, you make sure you saw AC Mike. I said hi. So <laughs> he said hi, Mike. Okay. Thank and you. Love you, man. Else there, my, and the two, to, to my students, thank you for being part of this. This is really critically important. So there you go, folks. President of Stockton University, uh, the one and only Dr. Harvey Kesselman, a great man, a great character of uh, uh, love, peace, passion, and work. Listen, we're going to come right back with uh, Tropicana Boogie Nights, my uh, friend and pal and a contributor to the AC Mike Show, Dave Benya, and he's going to have rock and roll. Uh, photographer of the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, my man, Mark Weiss. Stay tuned for the AC Bike Show. Hey, folks, welcome back to the AC Mike Show. Listen, we have a special guest for you lined up right now. 
AC Mike Show contributor Dave Pena is going to bring us Mark Weiss Guy Weiss. He is the rock and roll photographer of the stars. Enjoy and rock on. Thanks, AC Mike. And I'm so excited to introduce our next guest. His name is Mark Weiss Guy Weiss, and he's got an incredible new book and a story to tell the decade that rocked. Hey, thanks for having me, Dave Pena. What's up, brother? So tell us about how you got started in your career. Well, it started when I was 12 years old, actually, and I was mowing lawns, and this guy had his lawn that was really long. I knocked on his door, and I said, you, you know, do your lawn mode? And he's like, no, I do it myself. And I was like, well, it doesn't look that way. And he kind of, like, laughed, and he looked at me like I was this smart-ass kid. And he came back with his camera. He said, all right, tell you what, if you, if you mow my lawn for the season, I'll give you this camera. And I'm like, all right, I'm thinking like I'm going to hawk it at the, you know, at the, at the, you know, pawn shop down the street. <laughs> and, and then when I got it, I was like, this is pretty cool. And I started, you know, checking it out. And then I started learning how to develop film and it was, it was pretty cool. So then I kind of got the bug to learn photography and I just used to, sh you know, shoot pictures of my dog and my brother had a garage band and uh, used to ride motorcycles. So I was like, you know, the guy that did uh, all the photos at, at uh, my family events. And that's how I got started. That's awesome. So uh, what broke you, what, what was the turning point to get you into the business as far as getting your work published? Well, the turning point really was when I was at Crosby Stills Nash and Young at Roosevelt Stadium, 1974, I was 14. So this is two years later. And at that point, I put the camera down. I had no interest in taking pictures, really. I kind of got bored of it. But right. then I saw one of my uh, uh, my brother's friend had a camera. They snuck in, and he had these two hot girls with him. And he went to the front <laughs> of the he went to the front of the stage, and I was like, and I watched him like go into the sunset, you know, or go into the stage. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, at the next time I saw him, I saw these pictures that he developed, and and I was like, whoa, that's cool, man. And then I said, you know, you know, and he told, and he kind of told me how to sneak my camera in, and I kind of got the bug from there. So then. I think Elton John at the Garden was the next was this show in '74, maybe a few months later, that I snuck my camera in, and uh, I remember John Lennon showed up at that show too, which was really really cool. That's and then awesome. I just I kind of just got you know got the bug, and then it just kind of snowballed. I started sneaking it in, sneak my camera, in, taking pictures, and I started selling them for a buck a piece. Started meeting girls in high school, you know, because I was selling them in my, out of my locker too. My teachers let me, and then <laughs> and then and then a turn of fate was at a KISS show in 1977, and I got arrested for bootlegging photographs. So then I went to jail overnight, and then I said, all right, now what am I going to do? And I went to went home and moped a little bit, and then I'm reading the Circus Magazine, and then I looked at it, and it said New York City. I hopped on the next train with my, with my photographs. I just went in there. I was, you know, I was a kid. I was 16, 17 years old. Right. And I just got I knocked on the door and the secretary kind of liked me and she got me an interview with uh, the art director. And then it's just, it's, you know, the rest is history, really, you know. Oh, my gosh, that's fantastic. What's the favorite? What's your favorite band to photograph? My favorite band, I guess I, I would say Motley Crue. Uh, Motley Crue is. Why do you say that? Yeah. Motley Crue. They were just they're just four wild guys, you know, and they were each so different. And. Um, I mean, besides Kiss, of course, I mean, Kiss is amazing. I, I like any band that has four guys that are frontmen, pretty much, you know, when the drummer is as flamboyant as the singer, right. then that's that's the band that I like to shoot. And, and those guys, they, they all, you know, it's like the Beatles, you know, they, they have four distinct you know, personalities and personalities is what photographers you know, love to document and shoot. Yeah. And what's your connection with Atlantic City? Well, Atlantic City, I actually started, a, a, I'd say probably 10 years ago over in, um, yeah, 10 years ago, I did a, a show with actually this guy named Dave, Dave Pena, actually at you, uh, this guy, this guy, David, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he, he says, uh, he threw some cash down and he goes, Hey, Mark, you know, let's, let's start a, uh, a gallery here over at, um, cause, uh, he was, you know, this guy, Dave. Uh, owned Boogie Nights and he was uh, he had this space right next to it. So we basically got a bunch of my pictures blown up really big, had a gallery. First time I really ever seen one of my photographs. And, and it was kind of like the right timing for me to start branding myself. So that was like the beginning of my branding. And, then, you know, long story short, you know, we developed a relationship. 
you know, did some good business. And then a couple of years later, um, we did a, uh, he moved over because that was at resorts. Then we moved over to Tropicana and uh, I, he, he got me or he, you got me to uh, uh, shoot the uh, campaign, you know? So I shot like Michael Jackson and uh, Madonna, you know, the lookalikes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was fun. And it was on billboards and whatnot. So and it was, it was so cool to have you do that. It was really like an honor. It was fun. And, and for yeah. me, it was so cool because I was acting like, cause I never shot Michael Jackson or Madonna. I shot Madonna, but not like, you know, in a studio right. situation. So it was kind of cool to have all these characters right there. Cause I, you know, they, they acted like it. it was, it was really cool. Yeah. And uh, so, so that was cool. And then more, more recently um, the Wentworth gallery over in the, the hard rock casino um, mm -hmm. actually just uh, started uh, selling my photographs in, on canvas. So there's, there's about, 10 images um that's great are there for so that's that's i haven't even seen it yet i need to go down to atlantic city and check it out myself yeah let's talk about the book the decade that rocked tell us about it well it started i i got the publishing deal seven years ago believe it or not and the first two years it was going to be like a different kind of book because i i was kind of scared to do this big book like you see now where it turned into i kind of wanted to do like a I think it was like a 200 page book. It was going to be on hair metal and just, you know, it would be, an, it would have been an easy book to do. And then I started doing it. I was really done with it. And then I was like, do I really want this to be my first book? And I was like, you know what? I, I kind of like the process. I, I learned it. I learned dealing with the, the publisher and the editors and the writer. And I said, you know, I want, I want this to book to be more, you know, my, my, my son had a son. He, you know, it was just born. Uh, this is five years ago. And I wanted him to not see this book of a bunch of guys with hair. I wanted it to be a book about me. So really my, my grandson Jackson uh, was my inspiration to really like take this thing seriously and like go do 24 seven for really the last five years. And uh, it's, it's a narrative story of my life, you know, of, of when I got my first camera at age of 12 mm -hmm. and my trials and tribulations and my, you know, my hills and valleys and, you know, and my accolades and tell, I'm telling the stories of special shoots that I did. And also uh, the people that were my subjects, the rock stars, uh, you know, they're giving their interjection to, to the stories. And, you know, we pieced it together. And uh, uh, I had a writer named Richard Beanstock, who was amazing. He kind of took my words and mixed them together and, and turned it into, a, I think is, you know, I'm really proud of the book. You know, it's very representative of me as a photographer and as a person. So what's the future for you? Uh, well, I, the decade that rocked, I, I'm planning on, I, I just finished an exhibition uh, at the Monmouth Museum in, uh, in Lincroft, New Jersey, which was really successful. And they actually, it was so successful, they asked me to be on the board, which I'm, I am Hi. on this. Yeah, so I'm on the board at the Monmouth Museum. Uh, and uh, we're, we're, we're kind of, I'm kind of helping uh, create a musical experience there. Uh, one of my ideas, then we're, we're developing it right now because uh, you know, let's face it we have like within 10 minutes you know John Bon Jovi's got a house and Bruce Springsteen's got a house and and uh, so we, I want to pay tribute to, to those artists um, right. you know and Asbury Park has a really cool scene and that's not too far so that was really cool and then we're gonna I'm gonna take this uh, Mama Museum uh, to I got approached by someone that curates traveling museums so I'm gonna I just got asked to like kind of get sizes to put it in crates and everything. And mm -hmm. so we can, uh, you know, create a little business out of it. And then also, you know, work with some foundations in different cities um, and that kind of thing. That's awesome. So what's your best Atlantic city memory? My best Atlantic city memory is that I don't remember. It was so, <laughs> so awesome. You know, you know, listen, anyone that goes to Atlantic city, you know, they go there to have fun. And, you know, what they say, you know, what what happens in Atlantic City stays in Atlantic City. So I think I'm not that's Vegas, but yeah, Atlantic City, too. Atlantic <laughs> City, too. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, well, Vegas is Atlantic City is my my Vegas because uh, my mom had a condo down there right on the boardwalk. So whenever there was a show, I would go there, hang out. I'd go to Boogie Nights. I'd hang out there. And, you know, I do a little rock, a little disco, a little, little, all yeah. this stuff. So, you know, it's just good time. Uh, um, 
Aerosmith was awesome when they played the boardwalk. I mean, that was a great yeah. show. Um, so many good bands play there. And, mm. and uh, I, I have a great time at Boogie Nights, actually. It's so cool. It's so big. And it's, the lights, it reminded me of Studio, because I, I used to go to Studio 54 back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> and you know what? All your artwork is actually in Boogie Nights. So that's, that's true. Cool. It is. Yeah. Across yeah. the country. Mark Weiss, thank you so much. I appreciate you being with us. Oh, and thanks, keep, Dave. Keep documenting and making things rock. Hey, David, Mark, that interview was rocking. Listen, folks, stick around. We got more to come on the AC Mike Show. See you in a minute. Hey, folks, welcome back to the AC Mike Show. Uh, thank you for joining us, friends and family out there in uh, TV land. Listen, we have a very, very, very special guest uh, coming on right now. We have the founder of the uh, African-American uh, Museum of South Jersey. And we are so blessed here in Atlantic City to have one uh, here in the city itself, in the, as they call, 48 blocks of Atlantic City. Mr. Ralph Hunter, thank you for joining the AC Mike Show. Thank you, Mike, for having me. I'm delighted to be with you tonight. So there you go, man. Guys, uh, I'm so excited. I got to talk to this gentleman uh, a few days ago. And what we do when we sit down and talk, we go from everything from uh, Philadelphia to Atlantic City to Washington and then back here to the 401 in Atlantic City. So, uh Ralph, you know, you're all over the place. Uh, you, you do so many different uh, openings and, and uh, different um, uh, events. Uh, folks know you throughout as uh, the civil rights leader that you are, and we thank God that that's what you are. But let us know a little bit about uh, Ralph Hunter, uh, the, the young man. You know, that, where did this come from, your passion and growing up, sir? Always loved civil rights. Always loved history. I've been an advocate of um, art and history and the uh, opportunity for African-Americans to showcase their goods. So it's always been a dream of mine to make sure that African-American artists or poets have an opportunity to have a place to hang their goods on the wall. So we created the African-American Heritage Museum of Southern New Jersey. And we located, first of all, in Newtonville, New Jersey, some 19 years ago. Now we have two locations. One of the locations is in Atlantic City at the Arts Garage at 2200 Fairmont Avenue. And the other one's in Newtonville at 600 Jackson Road in Newtonville, New Jersey. And at both locations, we specialize in telling the story of the accomplishments of African-Americans, not only from around the world, but especially from Southern New Jersey. We really hang our hat on what happened in Newtonville back at the turn of the century. And we were excited to tell the story about Atlantic City, how African-Americans migrated to Atlantic City to build the hotels, to build its boardwalk, and to do all those great things and work in the hotels. So Atlantic City to me has really been a dream. And I always wanted to have the opportunity to work with people from that region. A lot of the senior citizens from there are very, very important to me. And they are my historians. Everyone has a historian. And the seniors are my historians. And we gather many, many items. We've cataloged hundreds, thousands and thousands of pieces from all over our region. So when you come to the museum, you get a guided tour. There's someone there to meet and greet you and tell you the history of the museum and how it got started. I just would welcome anyone who wants to come to the African American Museum to come and visit, bring your children, your grandchildren, and have a beautiful afternoon at the Arts Garage. It's not just the museum there, but we have uh, the uh, noise garages there as well. And there's lots of little shops and uh, of course the noise art garage museum. So it's really a, a great venture. It's a good day trip. It's it's a wonderful day trip. Listen, it's the heart of Ducktown. You got some great restaurants all around you. You got the uh, Tanger outlets, and then you got your great art and your museums and your installations. So, so Ralph, one of the things also that you and I speak of quite uh, often when we do talk, we talk uh, a subject we talked often about. And again, we don't have a whole bunch of time, but we're going to revisit this. 
Tell us a little bit about the North side, about the number of uh, doctors and, and, uh, and restaurants and that sort of thing. Cause it always amazes me uh, the number of people that live back there. I want to say it, but I'm going to wait for you to say it. Okay. Um, there were some 30,000 people of color living on the North side. North, the Atlantic City's North side was an area between Kentucky Avenue and all the way back to Venice Park and from Arkansas Avenue up to Connecticut Avenue. That's where the, the large amount of African Americans lived and they worked out of those areas. They owned hotels, restaurants, cab stands with doctors, lawyers, and our education system was second to none and all lived and worked from the North side. Uh, one of the few remaining businesses that are still around on the North side, of course, is the African-American church, which is a strong, very important part of the culture of Atlantic City's North side. But its entertainment district was also outstanding. And that was on Kentucky Avenue, where we had the likes of some of the greatest entertainers from around yeah. the world who came to Atlantic City to appear. And they had a club there was called the Club Harlem. Woo! had a show it was called the breakfast show the breakfast show was 6 a.m on sunday morning and people would come from all the other night spots around town even people from the 500 club guys like sinatra and all of his gang the rat pack would come over to the north side to hear sammy appear sammy davis had his first appearance in atlantic city on the at, at the club harlem so atlantic city's history is just incredible entertainment, sports. We had a wonderful Negro League baseball team here. It was called the Baccarat Giants. It was a wonderful opportunity to see the African-American Baseball League, the Little League, the Midget League, and all kinds of baseball and sports were played on the north side of Atlantic City. So we ended up with a great guy by the name of Gene Hudgens, who played for the Washington mm -hmm. Generals. And we had a lot of, lot of enter entertaining Wonderful times here in Atlantic City with both sports, with the religious groups, as well as with the schools and the, well, the churches. It was just a wonderful time to see in Atlantic City all these great things taking place all around us. So, so that's a wonderful thing. Uh, when you speak of some of those names, I had Mr. Huggins as a teacher at the Atlantic Community College when it would only have two C's. So, Mr. Hunter, unfortunately, we're, we're come to the end of this time. I want to thank you. You're definitely going to be back on again if I can get you. I know you're a busy man. Listen, when you were talking about the 500 Club there, too, one of our friends, Paula G. D'Amato, is going to be one of our guests on the show, too. And we'll be talking about all that great stuff that you spoke of, Sammy Davis and whatnot. Thank you so much for being a guest on the inaugural AC Mike show. Good luck to you and continued success. Thank you, folks. There you go. Ralph Hunter, the man, the founder of the African-American uh, Museum of South Jersey. Make sure you get out there to the Noise Arts uh, Museum in uh, Atlantic City. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> Hey, folks, I'd like to thank you all for joining us on the inaugural AC Mike show. Listen, to find more about AC Mike, you can go to Facebook pages, Mike Lopez, AC Mike, Live, Work, Play AC, and on Instagram, AC Mike and Jay. Listen, again, thank you to our special guest, folks, Dr. Harvey Kesselman, president of Stockton University, Ralph Hunter of the African-American Heritage Museum of South Jersey, rock and roll photographer Mark Weiss, brought to you by Dave Pena. Listen, a special thank you to Stockton University. Love you, and listen, all of you, live, work, play, AC. I'll see you next time.